7.1 vectors as forces today. We're going to talk about vertical and horizontal forces, pulling a tow truck from a ditch. We're going to do some talk about resultant and composition of forces and some non-collinear forces with just two forces acting on a body and the good old box resting on a ramp question. In the next lesson, I'll cover uh, ropes and rope tensions, um, chandeliers hanging from the ceiling, and also the airplanes, ground speed, that kind of question. Okay, so vectors as forces. So when you have a vector, you know that this vector AB would be the sum of two vectors from the horizontal component plus the vertical component could get you to this point. So this is like your resultant of two components. So we're going to use that when we talk about some other examples. In this case, we're going to do a tow truck question. So my tow truck is kind of, well, ask my students. My drawings are never uh, very accurate or they're actually kind of funny. This is a tow truck. Maybe I should label it so you understand what I'm trying to draw. And this is supposed to be a car, although it kind of looks like, I don't know, somebody lying in a sled. This is a car, and it's in a ditch. So a tow truck is pulling a car from a ditch. The tension in the cable is 15,000 newtons at an angle of 40 degrees to the horizontal. Okay, so that means the tension in here is 15,000 newtons. More on newtons in a minute at an angle of 40 degrees to the horizontal. Okay, so I need a horizontal here. So here's my horizontal. And then I would have a vertical component here. So, oops, that didn't draw. What happened? Pencil isn't reaching. Okay, something like that. Okay, so this is my horizontal force here. And it said it was 40 degrees to the horizontal. So that means my angle in here is 40 degrees. So this is my force horizontal. This is my force vertical. Draw a diagram showing the resolution of the, for the force into its rectangular components. So that's a horizontal plus a vertical gives you this one. So this is the, the resultant of my forces. Determine the magnitude of the horizontal and vertical components. Okay, so if I want to know what the horizontal force is here, I'm just going to use basic trigonometry, like primary trig ratios here. So here's my right angle, here's my angle, this is the hypotenuse, this is the adjacent side, and this is the opposite side. Remember all that? That's grade 10 work. You should be very familiar with that. So if I want to figure out what the horizontal force is, I'm going to say the cos of 40 degrees, cos, because it's adjacent and hypotenuse, cos of 40 degrees is the force horizontal over 15,000 newtons. So that means the force horizontal is going to be 15,000 times the cos of 40 degrees, which you will do on your calculator and you'll get something around 11,490 newtons. Wasn't that easy? Okay, so I'm sure you could figure out all on your own, own how to find the vertical force. This time we're dealing with the opposite. So we're going to use the sine of 40 degrees is going to be equal to the vertical force over 15,000. So that means the vertical force is going to be 15,000 times the sine of 40. These are easy ones. Hopefully you get one of these on your test, right? So that's approximately 9,642 newtons. So the combined force of these two gives you this 15,000 newtons. Easy peasy. Yes, that was simple. Okay, the resultant and composition of forces. This is just a lot of words to say uh, something very obvious. It says the resultant of several forces is a single force that can be reused to represent the combined effect of all the forces. The forces that we combine are called components. So you can think of that simply as something like uh, basic as a tug of war contest. 
you have a force from one side and a force from the other and the resultant is this tension on the cord and uh, or the rope and eventually somebody wins and everybody falls hopefully not your team so the equilibrant of several forces is the single force that keeps the object in a state of equilibrium so if you have two very even teams and they're both pulling on that cord nobody's going anywhere so you have the same force on both sides and that's what keeps things in equilibrium same thing when we talk about the box on the ramp. If the box isn't moving, it's in a state of equilibrium. So the forces must balance. You should know that a kilogram mass exerts a downward force of, so this is, you know, your acceleration due to gravity, one kilogram times 9.8 meters per second squared, or 9.8 newtons downward. Downward. That's like gravity, right? Gravity doesn't go up. So you must always convert kilograms to newtons before starting the question. Often the question will have newtons in it and you don't have to do anything, but there should be one thrown at you that's in kilograms. And if you don't convert it, you'll get all the wrong answers. Okay, so collinear forces, the most obvious kind. I'm pushing this way and you're pushing this way. We're both pushing on something and we combine our forces or even better, like, um, when we do airplane, if you're in the air and the wind is blowing in the same direction as you are, you can just add those two forces together and you get a nice straight linear force, collinear, on the same line, or parallel forces as we say. So if you have a force going this way, you have an equal and opposite force going in the other way if you're not moving in an equilibrium. And this is the negative of the sum of these, and that's called the equilibrant. And we will be drawing the equilibrants onto our forces a little bit later in the next question. Okay, so let's go to some non-collinear forces, which of course are the ones that cause the most word problems. <laughs> Hopefully not problems, but definitely a word problem. So you have two forces of 20 newtons and 30 newtons acting on a body at an angle of 50 degrees to one another. Find the magnitude and direction of the resultant and the equilibrant. So remember we talked about um, finding direction. So you might have to find direction in terms of one of the vectors because we don't have north, south, east, west on here. This could be 50 degrees and I could have turned this or drawn this in any way I want long as it's 50 degrees between the vectors notice are tail to tail and I've drawn the 20 newton one up here it doesn't matter which way you put it you'll get the same answer and 30 newtons down here with a 50 degree angle between them so the resultant of course is not this line don't do that that would be subtracting them right and um, this is um, another example of where you have to remember to find this other angle, this large angle in here, before you can figure out what the resultant is. And so I'm going to use the parallelogram method of addition here. So I'm just drawing myself a nice parallelogram so it looks pretty and you know what I'm talking about. And here's my resultant right here. Don't forget to put arrows on them. Arrows indicate vectors. So I need to know what this angle is here. How do we find that angle? Do you remember? If this is 50 degrees in here, this is going to be 130 degrees. It's one of those, um, what did we call them? Um, it starts with a C. I've let my brain's gone numb. 130 degrees. So they add up to 180 degrees, right? This one plus this one in a parallelogram. Um, or you could say, um, we could use a Z pattern. No, we can't. I can't remember the name of it. Help me, help me. You know what it is. Write it in the comments below. It starts with a C. Uh, corresponding angles. There we go. 130 degrees is here. 50 is here. May, remember, you're using this angle. Oh, the other way you could have done it was extend this, right? If this is 50, this is 50 degrees. That would be your F pattern. See the big F? So this is 130 in here. And we know this is 30. We also know this is 20 because it's a parallelogram. These lines are the same length, same 
the same magnitude for your vector. So you're going to use the same system that you did before to find the resultant. So let's call this Q and S up here so we have something to work with. So the magnitude of QS, all we're going to do is the cosine law again. So we're going to do 30 squared plus 20 squared minus 2 times 30 times 20 times the cos of 130 degrees. Okay, so if you do all that math, let me see, I've got an answer here somewhere. It's about 45.5 newtons. That's the magnitude of the resultant. So I need to know the direction. So we have magnitude and direction. Don't forget, you always need the direction. So I have this now is 45.5 newtons. So I can use the sine law to find this little bitty angle in here, right? I want this theta because I need to know the direction from either from the 30 Newton force up or you can see from the resultant down, but you need something to refer it to. So I'm going to use the sine law. So I'm going to say the sine of 130 degrees over 45.5 is going to be equal to the sine of theta over 20. And theta is going to be equal to, so we do sine theta is 20 times sine 130 over 45.5. And then you're going to shift to get, to go from degree, from um, the ratio to the degrees, right? You remember all that. That's basic math. So 19.7 degrees approximately. Okay, so that means, um, it didn't leave a lot of room here for me to write this question. I thought I had plenty of room. So the resultant resultant has a force of 45.5 newtons at an angle, not angel, but angle of, now we have to describe it in terms of, we're going to say 19.7 degrees, and then you can say clockwise from the resultant, clockwise from resultant toward the 30 Newton force. And 30 Newton force. Okay, now we didn't talk about the equilibrant. Mm, you know what? I don't think I left enough room on this page to draw it. But your equilibrant has to be equal and opposite direction. So this is, um, this is definitely, let me get a ruler here. So this is... So like from seven to two and a half. Oh, that's going to take me right off my page. So what you want to do is you want to draw a vector going this way. That's the same length as this one. I didn't have enough room. But this is your equilibrant here. And I have no pen. Oh, enough. Okay. So your equilibrant is going this way. So your equilibrant has, let's write that over here. The equilibrant. has a force of, so it's the same amount of force, 45.5 newtons at an angle of, so I, I need to know this angle from the equilibrant, or from the, from the, um, 30 Newton force, or you can do it from this way. You can say this, find this angle and say counterclockwise from the 20 Newton force, or you can say from the 30 Newton force, this distance. So I think I'm going to use this one here because I know this is 19.7 degrees. And so this angle here is going to be 180 minus 19.7, and that's going to be 160.7 degrees. So 180 minus 19.7. So at an angle of 160.3 degrees clockwise. Clockwise is always nice. From the 30 Newton force. So again, what you want to do is be able to describe the angle as it relates to one of these forces or from the equilibrant as we did on this side. Okay, so we said from the equilibrant to this way or this way to the equilibrant. 
Okay, so that's, you've done several of these already, right? We did these ones in the, um, it's a little dark today. We did these questions in six point, uh, I forget what number, but we've done at least three of these already, right? Okay, so let's take a look at this one. This is your famous box resting on a ramp, um, inclined at 20 degrees. Resolve the weight into the rectangular components that keep the box at rest. Okay, so the first thing you want to do, and I'm going to make some little numbers here. So first thing you want to do is draw the um, 140 Newton force. Okay, so 140 Newtons, that kind of force is straight down, right? It, don't think about the ramp, think about here. So it's got to come straight down because it's the force due to gravity. So you have 140 Newtons, and I'm just going to draw it right from the middle of it about. So it's 140 Newtons this way, going up and going down. Right, this is the force that you would think of. This one here, this 140 newtons this way because it's gravity. So, because it's not moving, it means it has to be in equilibrium. So, we have 140 newtons up and we have 140 newtons down, and that means it's not moving. Okay, so that's your first step draw on the force now. You also have another force, and that is the force that is perpendicular to the ramp. And that's how we're going to get our vertical and horizontal components. So I want 90 degrees to this ramp. So that's about here. And I want to match it into this one so that I can draw in the... Um, the horizontal and vertical components. So my horizontal force is going to be the force that runs, I should have put this, let's change the arrow. It's going to be running parallel to the ramp. So like this. I'm just gonna extend this red line here because my drawing would be perfect if it was. Okay, so this is my, this pink line here, I'm gonna put it over here. This is my horizontal force. And I have a vertical force as well, and that's the green line. This is vertical force, so force vertical. So the, um, let's write that on here. The force vertical is perpendicular to the ramp. And the pink one, which is the force horizontal, is parallel parallel to the ramp. And if you can draw those three forces on your diagram, you're going to have this question nailed, right? Because the rest of it is just figuring out a couple of little angles in here. I'll get my pencil out. So if this is 90 degrees here, and this is 20, then this one up here has to be 70 degrees, right? You have to add up to 180. If that's 70, then this little angle in here I'll just shade it in here. This angle here has to be 20 degrees. You see how I got that? This is 90 again. I've got another 90 degree angle here. And if this is 20, then this is also 20, equal and opposite. They're opposite angles. Two lines crossing, opposite angles, 20 degrees. So now you have everything in this little diagram, this triangle right here. So you have the angle you have the, the um, hypotenuse here of 140. This is your opposite. This is your adjacent. And there you're off to the races to solve for your vertical force. So I'm going to say the cos of 20 degrees because it's adjacent over hypotenuse. So that's the vertical force over 140. And so the vertical force is 140 times the cos of 20 degrees. And that's going to come out to approximately 131.6 Newtons. Likewise, you would do the horizontal force. So the horizontal force, now we're talking about the sine this time. Sine of 20 degrees because we have the opposite. So it's the horizontal force divided by 140. 
the horizontal force is 140 times the sine of 20 degrees, and that comes out to about 47.9 newtons. And then you would have a nice little concluding statement, or you would say something like, therefore, the box is kept in equilibrium, or at rest, whatever you want to say. I would say equilibrium because it sounds more sophisticated. By a force, by a force, my writing's getting worse. Force of 131.6 newtons perpendicular to the ramp. To the, right off the page, to the ramp. And by a friction. Oh, I didn't mention that. Of course it's friction. That's what, if this was a really slippery ramp, it wouldn't stay there at all, right? A friction of 47.9 newtons parallel to the ramp. Okay, so those, these questions are much easier than they look, right? When you first see this, until you, you draw the, um, your forces it's really kind of confusing. You just have a ramp. Now you can redo this question on your own. Draw it. I would say draw this two or three times and you'll have it nailed. So you draw in your Newton force and then you put your vertical force perpendicular to the ramp. That was this green one. You put your horizontal force parallel. So this is parallel here, right? This one and this one are parallel to the ramp. And then you can very easily find this angle in here of 20 degrees or whatever this angle is here, it's going to be the same one here, right? So if I said had a ramp with a 30 degree angle, that's going to be 30 degrees. Okay, we'll see you in the next lesson when I cover chandeliers. We're going to hang from the ceiling and we're going to do some airplane questions. Bye for now.